Welcome to Module 14 and the last module in the series of 14 modules on the fundamentals of telecommunications. The topic of this module is convergence of voice, video, and data. Once again, I'm Ted Chandler, your CIS instructor for this online course. Upon completion of this module, you will be able to first identify common terminology used to describe applications and other aspects of converged networks. Then you'll be able to describe several different applications available on converged networks, outline possible VOIP implementations and examine the costs and the benefits of VOIP, explain methods for encoding analog voice or video signals as digital signals for transmission over a packet switched network, identify the key signaling and transport protocols that may be used with VOIP, and finally, you'll be able to understand quality of service or the QoS challenges on converged networks and discuss techniques that can improve QoS. Several terms describe the transmission of voice signals over packet switched networks. Voice over network, or VON, includes voice over IP, or Internet Protocol, voice over frame relay, voice over ATM, and voice over DSL. On most data networks, voice is transmitted via the Internet Protocol, a service also known as IP telephony. In an organization, VOIP can improve efficiency and competitiveness, supply new or enhanced features and applications, centralize voice and data network management, and save organizations money. This is the main reason organizations upgrade their legacy telephone systems to VOIP, and that is to save money. End users require an IP telephone or a soft phone, which is a computer equipped with voice over IP client software to communicate via VOIP. Analog phones can be used, but must first be connected to an IP PBX, private branch exchange, capable of translating between analog signals and IP signals. Techniques for converting a traditional telephone from its analog signal to digital signals uh, in order to access a network backbone include using an adapter card within a computer workstation, connecting the traditional telephone to a switch capable of accepting traditional voice signals, converting them into packets, then issuing the packets to a data network, and finally, connecting the traditional telephone to an analog PBX, which then connects to a voice gateway to convert the signals. By using an IP telephone, VOIP can be implemented on a private or public network. On private networks, VOIP may include IP telephones connected to an IP PBX, VOIP connections to common carriers, and VOIP over uh, private WANs or VOIP over uh, virtual private LANs or a combination of all these. Fax over IP is commonly implemented according to either the ITU T.37 or T.38 standard. T.37, also known as store and forward faxing, faxing, attaches IP fax networks as gateways which transmit the faxes to other fax gateways across the network. T.38 delivers IP fax, uh, based faxes in real time. Video over IP is challenged by the delay and loss characteristics of packet switched networks. Also, it requires significantly more bandwidth than VOIP or FOIP. It is transmitted in three ways, point-to-point -point called unicast, point-to-multipoint -multi with user registration called multicast, and point-to-multipoint with no user registration requirement, and that's called broadcast. 
Call centers are good candidates for convergent networks. They can merge telephone calls with email, voicemail, and also merge with uh, customer relationship management programs called CRMs to provide quicker and better customer services. Unified messaging makes several forms of communications available from a single user interface. In unified messaging, a user can, for example, access the web and also send or receive faxes, email messages, voicemail messages, or telephone calls, all from one console. The main console typically consists of a graphical user interface on a computer or an IP telephone. Implementing VOIP does not always save an organization money. Organizations with high volumes of long-distance traffic stand to gain the most from VOIP due to toll bypassing. To determine whether VOIP will pay off, a business should conduct a detailed cost-benefit analysis. Characteristics that make a business particularly well-suited to running VOIP over a private network include a high number of telephone lines, for example, more than 100, several locations that are geographically dispersed across long distances, for example, over a continent or across the globe, a high volume of long distance call traffic between locations within the organizations, sufficient capital for upgrading or purchasing new CPE, connectivity equipment, land transmission media, and WAN links, and finally, that the goals of the organization continue uh, to be in the area of network and business expansion. The major costs involved in migrating to and supporting a converged network include cost of purchasing or upgrading CPE, connectivity devices, transmission media for each location, cost of installing services and vendor maintenance, cost of training technical employees and other staff, recurring cost of new or expanded connections, and finally, the cost of transmitting voice and data if part of the connection fees are usage-based. Codecs convert analog voice signals into digital forms. They can be divided into three types, waveform codecs, vocoders, and hybrid codecs. The PSTN uses a simple pulse code modulation, or PCM technique, which is a waveform codec known by its ITU standard as G.711, and it provides excellent sound quality but requires 64 kilobits per second of throughput. VOIP networks use codecs that conserve bandwidth but provide lesser sound quality than G.711. They also require more processing resources and introduce some delays as the signal is reconstructed at the receiving end. Examples of VOIP hybrid codecs include G.723, G.726, G.728, and G.729. Each standard uses a different technique and results in different sound qualities, delays, and processing burdens. VOIP networks typically use either the H.323 or Session Initiated Protocol, SIP, for their signaling and control protocols. H.323 is actually a set of standards specified for several functions on a multi-service network. Because it is older and more sophisticated, it is more common than SIP. However, SIP is regarded as potentially more efficient and scalable than H.323. On networks with multiple media gateways, a media gateway controller is used to offload calls uh, control functions from the gateways. This allows the gateways to concentrate their resources on handling payload information translation. Media gateway controllers and media gateways communicate through the media gateway control protocol or the MGCP or similar protocol known as MEGACO. Megaco. 
In summary, you have learned in this last module, first, that in an organization, VOIP can improve efficiency and competitiveness, supply new and enhanced features and applications, and centralize voice and data network management, and finally reduce cost of telecommunications, especially in the long haul. Fax over IP is commonly implemented according to either the ITU T.37 or T.38 standard. Call centers are good candidates for converged networks. And finally, you learn that codecs convert analog voice signals into digital, digital forms. This completes Module 14 and the last module on the fundamentals of telecommunications. Please take Quiz 14 and prepare for your final uh, exam by reviewing all 14 modules and retake the quizzes if you need additional preparation. Remember that you can retake any of the quizzes but the midterm and final only once.